Maintaining a successful garden involves paying close attention to the changes in your garden throughout the growing season and managing those changes appropriately to produce the desired outcomes that you wish to see. Contributors to these changes include unwanted pests and the growth of undesired weeds. Managing pests and weeds can be done naturally or artificially, but successful management of garden pests and weeds require careful identification so that the correct treatment is used. It is important to note that there are beneficial animals and plants in our gardens and we must make concerted efforts not to disrupt these in a negative way. Another important observation in our garden or the areas closely surrounding our garden is the amount of rainfall you receive in your area. Rainwater can be an important resource to help your plants thrive. Harvesting rainwater can be a significant investment, especially in areas experiencing drought. When harvesting rainwater, there are things that you should think about that may greatly determine the effectiveness of your rainwater harvesting system. Bugs. There are hundreds, maybe thousands, of different kinds of bugs on the Navajo Reservation. Many are very helpful in the garden, some cause problems, and most are just living their little bug lives and probably being helpful to us in ways that are too complicated to understand easily. All of them are part of the great web of life that connects every living creature. Is something eating holes in the leaves of your garden plants? If you don't see the bug on the top of the leaf, look on the bottom side of the leaf. You might find the bug or some small clusters of tiny bug eggs. It is helpful to identify the particular species of bug that is causing problems. Squash beetles are easy to see and usually found on squash plants. They can be controlled simply by picking them off by hand and putting them in a jar to contain them. Other bugs that damage garden plants, such as aphids, are very small and can be seen better with a magnifying glass. Try taking a close-up photo of the bug with your cell phone and make a note of what kind of plant you found it on. This will help you identify it and find information online for how to eliminate them from your garden. Ladybug larvae, the growth stage of ladybugs, love to eat aphids. Adult ladybugs lay their eggs in places where they are likely to be aphids so that when the eggs hatch, the larvae will be able to find their favorite food. Pesticides. Pesticides can be dangerous to people if used improperly. If you feel that you must use a pesticide, be sure to read all of the instructions for how to use it safely. Pesticides are toxic chemicals that have labels to ensure proper and effective use. Some restricted pesticides require the applicator to be a certified individual in order to use. It is often illegal to remove or alter the pesticide label. Be aware that you may be harming some of the creatures that are beneficial to your garden unintentionally when you use pesticides. If managing a smaller garden, a pesticide may not be needed to control the creatures that are bothering your garden. There is information online for how to deal with pest problems without using chemicals. These methods are referred to as biological pest control. Although a more natural way to manage pests through natural mechanisms, it typically requires an active human management role. Pesticides that are approved for organic gardening are less toxic than their synthetic counterparts. Organic pesticides generally hum from things in nature that can be used to control pests. This includes substances derived from plants, minerals, and microorganisms. Larger creatures such as birds can be prevented from eating your fruits by putting a net over your small fruit trees or bushes. Many types of birds love to eat grasshoppers and other bugs that can be damaging plants, so having birds around is a good thing. Prairie dogs causing problems can be caught in a cage trap and relocated. Cows, horses, sheep, and goats can quickly destroy your entire garden. To avoid this, your garden should be secured from livestock with a strong fence. The fence should be a type that can keep dogs out as well. Cattle panels and teepos make a good garden fence. Weeds. Weeds are plants that we don't want competing for water and sunlight with the plants we are growing for food. Many of the plants that are weeds in our garden are useful plants growing in other places such as in pastures or around fruit trees. Some kinds of annual weeds can help improve the soil in areas where we would want to grow a garden in the future. Annual plants grow for one season and then die completely and will only come back if they made seeds to grow new plants. This makes them easier to control or eliminate. Perennial plants can live for many years. They may die back on the surface, but their deep root systems will survive through the winter and will sprout back up quickly in the spring. This makes perennial weeds a challenge to deal with. Beginner gardeners should learn how to identify the kinds of weeds in their gardens even when they are very small, and be able to tell them apart from the seeds they have planted that are sprouting. If you plant your tiny seeds, such as lettuce, carrots, or beets, in straight rows and place them a uniform distance apart, you will be able to see this pattern as the seeds sprout up. Larger seeds, such as squash, melons, and corn, are much easier to recognize when they sprout. 
There are several common weeds on the Navajo reservation that are actually very edible and nutritious. These weeds can provide something for you to eat early in the season before your garden plants are ready to eat. Our ancestors would have called these plants food, not weeds. We are not going to eat all the weeds in our garden, but all the weeds we don't eat can be food for our garden if we turn the weeds into compost. This is one practice to recycle garden waste back into the garden in a beneficial way. All organic matter eventually decomposes. Composting speeds the process by providing an ideal environment for bacteria and other decomposing microorganisms. Plants thrive in garden soil that is uncompacted and rich in organic matter or compost, making it much easier to pull weeds out. Rainwater Harvesting it is recommended to check your state's laws on rainwater harvesting and the proper permits required to collect rainwater. Water from rain or snow is wonderful for plants. Rainwater does not have any of the minerals and salts that groundwater has, which can concentrate in soils and be harmful to plants. Rainwater contains nitrates and is slightly acidic, which helps to balance the alkalinity of soil. We can collect rainwater from a rooftop if we have rain gutters on the roof and a tank to store the water in. The amount of rainwater collected will depend on the size of the roof and the size of the tank. It is important to collect and store the water safely. Avoid collecting rainwater from a roof with an overhanging tree. Trees attract birds and insects that will drop feces onto the roof and contaminate the water. Leaves and small branches can clog the rain gutter. Screen filters can help keep debris out of the tank. It is a good idea to clean the rain gutters at least once a year also. If sunlight can shine through the wall or the top of the storage tank, algae can grow in the water. This can be a problem for lighter colored plastic tanks or any tank without a covering over the top. To avoid algae growth, use tanks that are dark in color or that limit the amount of sunlight from penetrating into the tank. This will decrease the chance of algae growth if you remove the sunlight required for photosynthesis. During our cold winters, the water in tanks and fittings can freeze. If the tank and storage system is on the south side of the building, this will be less of a problem. A large tank will require a solid base to support it. A gallon of water slightly weighs over 8 pounds, so a 100 gallon tank will weigh about 800 pounds when full, and a 1000 gallon tank will weigh about 8000 pounds. If the bottom of a plastic tank is in contact with a sharp rock, it could puncture the tank. A concrete slab or well-compacted soil make a good base for a large water tank. Avoid using tanks that was previously used to store any kind of toxic material such as gasoline or mortar oil. The best roofing material to collect rainwater from is a metal roof. Asphalt shingles or rolled roofing materials contain chemicals that will end up in the rainwater you are collecting. A metal roof will also hold less sand and debris. Another critical part is the overflow system. At some point your tank or tanks are likely to fill up. You will need to plan for where the overflow will go. The best option is for the water to flow onto your landscape and puddle up in areas where it can soak into the ground and provide extra water for trees, shrubs, or your garden. A key factor to determine the size of the water tank is to first determine the size of your roof and how much water will fall on it if it rains one inch. Measure the width and length of the roof and multiply them to get the roof area in square feet. The amount of water in one square foot, one inch deep, is 0.623 gallons. Multiply the size of the roof in square feet by 0.623 and you will get the number of gallons your roof could collect if you have one inch of rainfall. Typically on the Navajo Reservation, a passing rain shower is no more than a quarter of an inch. So you could divide the number for one inch by four. The bigger your tank, the more likely you are to have water saved where when it is not a rainy day. Conclusion We can actively influence the health of our gardens by being observant and diligent in managing unwanted pests. Whether we choose to use pesticides or natural processes to deter pests, both require important attention to detail. Through our careful observations, we can begin to educate and familiarize ourselves with the diverse animal and plant life that inhabit our gardens. We can also harness rainwater and use it in effective ways that will be beneficial for our plants.